Hi, how are you? Good. On the top of the word, excellent, excellent. Now, dear students, we are moving onwards to our second chapter, inverse trigonometric function. A very nice and very interesting chapter. Now, I have written on the blackboard that what are the concepts, what are the things which we are going to do in this chapter. Contents. Recap of previous chapter. Now, for doing this chapter, we want a recap for our first chapter, which we have done in class 12th and a chapter done in class 11th. Okay. Introduction about the chapter, about the inverse trigonometric function, basic concept, principal values, graphical representation of inverse trigonometric functions, properties of inverse trigonometric functions and important questions from the examination point of view. Okay, now if you remember what we did in class 11th, in the class 11th we were having a chapter trigonometric functions. Okay, before class 11th you did some about trigonometric ratios, normal starting basics were done in class 10 about some angles also which were only up to from 0 to 90 degree in the first quadrant and some values. Okay, a nice table was drawn by you people and uh, you just gave me the values. Okay. So now all together we are going to use all that concepts, basic concepts for our, this chapter. Now coming for your class 11th, if you remember what you did in class 11th, in class 11th right from the beginning it was system of angles, pi, 90 degree, grades, okay like the radians like this one. Okay, so we did with system of angles, then trigonometric functions, a definition of trigonometric functions, okay, then trigonometric ratio of compound angles, trigonometric ratio of multiple and submultiple angles, transformation formulas, circular functions, and a very nice topic it was trigonometric equations. Okay. Now, if you remember what were trigonometric equations, if suppose a student is going to ask you, a small student of class 10, he is going to ask you, okay, brother or a sister, what is the value for uh, sin pi by 3? You are answering that sin pi by 3 is root 3 by 2. Okay. So, now he can ask you only one value has root 3 by 2 or more. Curiosity. So, now you are means when you have done in class uh, 11 the trigonometric equation you can answer very nicely okay then relation between sides and angles or it is called height and distances and a small topic i forget to tell in between why i forget to tell because i want to tell you at the end that was graphical representation of trigonometric functions on behalf of that functions we are going to do now graphical representation of inverse trigonometric functions okay so, I, I will just give you a nice example for that also. So, this was the thing which we did in class 11th. Okay. Now, moving to class 12th. In class 12th, what we did? We proved that when a function is 1, 1, when a function is on 2, when a function, when we have to find the inverse of a function, what conditions are? Now, here inverse is written on the top. Now, what are the conditions for finding the inverse? For finding the inverse, we are having a function should be 1, 1 and on 2. Okay. Now, again coming back to class 11th, in 11th we have gone through the chapter that all the ratios, they are not 1, 1. Okay. They are not 1, 1 or on 2 on their natural domains, but normally we are saying they are surjective functions, means on 2 functions are there. Okay. 1, 1, they are not 1, 1. Now, when the function is not 1, 1, it is on 2, then how we can say it? we are going to find the inverse of trigonometric function? So, this is the nice concept where what we are going to do today. Okay. So, now just uh, going for the small recap for the trigonometric ratio, let us start it. Now, <coughs> moving for the recap of the previous chapter and in the recap, I am just going to tell you about any of one trigonometric ratio and let it be sin x. Okay. Now, suppose we are having sin x is equal to y and we are writing sin x is equal to, you can write any value, suppose it is 1 by 2, any value. Okay. We can, means from here we are going to start this one. Now, suppose we are starting from sin x is equal to half. Okay. Now, where is sin x, when sin x is half, when sin pi by 6, it is at pi by 6 then it is at half. Now, let us write other values for sin x 
maximum values which you can tell me okay one by one you can speak and i am going to write it now sign let's start with our uh, means which are which were the values in the first quadrant okay now sign zero zero sign after zero what what were in the first degree from zero to ninety okay sign zero zero sign pi by six is equal to one by two sin pi by 4 sin pi by 4 is equal to root 2 upon 2 nowadays you will be look, getting in every book it is in root 2 by 2 because normally what we are we were uh, going through it was 1 upon root 2 so in the denominator there should not be no search so after rationalization of 1 upon root 2 we are getting root 2 by 2 okay so uh, try to write root 2 by 2 then <coughs> sin pi by 3 is equal to root 3 by 2 sin pi by 2 is equal to 1 now this this was the normal values which you have gone through class 10th okay now let's write what you uh, learned in class 11th now in 11th we were having many values and now i am writing here this was sin pi by 6 is equal to sin 5 pi by 6 both were 1 by 2 okay because in the second quadrant sin is positive now then <coughs> sin 7 pi by 6 is equal to sin 11 pi by 6 is equal to minus 1 by 2 in the third and the fourth quadrant okay then moving to different values okay because i just want to show you whether it is 1 1 or not <coughs> now we are having you can uh, say that sin now minus pi by 2 is equal to minus 1 sin i am just writing here it is plus minus pi is equal to 0 sin plus minus 2 pi is equal to 0 so we can write number of values okay so these are the all values what i have written here now a small recap for again for the one nice term was domain and range okay domain and range now what is domain of a function and function is what sin x okay what is the domain of a function it was given as minus infinity to infinity or set of all real numbers set of all real numbers okay so this was a domain and set of all real numbers is called r okay what is range of a function now let's move for the range range of a function it was closed interval minus 1 to 1 okay so domain and range it was domain and range and a nice diagram for that one was suppose i am drawing here a graph of sin x so this is infinity this side to minus infinity and it is 1 and this is minus 1 ok. So this was the graph and now we are going to see a very nice graphs on the when we are doing graphical representation for inverse trigonometric function. So now basically this is the graph it can move in this side also this side also. So values this is 1 I told you from here it is 1 here it is minus 1 so all these values whatever we have written if you are finding it algebraically then they will not cross minus 1 and 1 never okay so that's why range is minus 1 to 1 and domain is set of all the real numbers now let's start with a very nice venn diagram and one thing more <coughs> what we did in the horizontal test in the horizontal test if we are drawing a line horizontal to x-axis then it cuts our graph in many points so it means it is not one one this is the first thing which, what we are going to do again okay so now <coughs> we have a lot of values so many values we are having for <coughs> our venn diagram so let's start it now we are having suppose this is function fx and this is y okay and function fx is what sin x now <coughs> <coughs> 
first part is always for domain so our domain is from minus infinity to infinity and our range is from minus 1 to 1 okay so now let's start filling all these values okay let's start it it is for sin x so now you can start from anywhere suppose we are starting from <coughs> sin 0 suppose here it is 0 here it is angle is 0 and here we are getting 0 we are at a 0 okay first value then moving for another value <coughs> pi by 6 and phi pi by 6 now suppose pi by 6 this value is pi by 6 and phi pi by 6 okay i will draw it separately pi by 6 pi for pi by 6 it is 1 by 2 1 by 2 so this is pi by 6 1 by 2 5 pi by 6 5 pi by 6 again 1 by 2 okay then we are having 7 pi by 6 7 pi by 6 minus 1 by 2 11 pi by 6 11 pi by 6 again minus 1 by 2 okay now after this <coughs> put some other values also we can put it for example sin, sin pi by 3 pi by 3 root 3 by 2 okay after pi by 3 now before doing this what you did in class 11th it was a trigonometric equation it was if sin x is equal to sin y now this i am just for uh, just showing you how may, how we can write number of values okay sin x equal to sin y we were having therefore it implies it implies x is equal to n pi plus minus 1 raised to power n y where y belongs to z okay so when pi by 3 is root 3 by 2 now <coughs> We can put here value of y, we can take it pi by 3 and we can start putting n as 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 3, minus 3. So, you can get number of values for that part, okay. So, now we were having <coughs> sin pi by 3 is root 3 by 2. Now, so many values are there. Similarly, we are having 1 by root 2, okay. It is pi and phi pi by 6. Now, can we have suppose n is 4 4 pi plus minus 1 raised raise to power 4 into pi by 6 y is pi by 6 okay so what the answer is we are having now 4 pi plus pi by 6 minus 1 raised to power 4 is even function okay 4 pi plus pi by 6 is what 25 pi by 6 so 25 pi by 6 we are having 25 pi by 6 so number of values are there for each range for each range okay so now this value what type of value is this what type of graph is there sorry what type of Venn diagram is there this is many one many two one okay many values to one value Okay, this is from many to one. Now, when it is from many to one, it is not one one. When it is not one one, then how we can find the inverse of sin x? This we are going to study for the next thing that was in the introduction, little bit introduction and then in the basic part. So, let us move to the second content.